Hello everybody, my name is Robert Kellenpin and I'll walk you through a quick example of doing a bond pricing example with the BA2 Plus calculator. So let's jump right into it. Uh, here's our example for our bond price. We have some attributes of the bond here. We have a thousand dollar par value bond. We have 10 years to maturity. The coupon rate on the bond is 7% which pays semi-annually and the yield on the bond is 8%. So if we uh, pull up the uh, BA2 Plus calculator here uh, here we're going to use the time value of money functions, uh, these five keys across uh, row number three of the calculator. I'm going to show you that method uh, first, and then I'm also going to show you a second method that's a little bit lesser known and using the bond function here just above uh, the nine key. So let's get into the example here. So since we have 10 years to maturity and this bond pays semi-annually, okay, the end periods we're going to have 20 periods okay so we can press 20 uh, into n uh, the second component here uh, is going to be our iy okay so since we have a yield here of eight percent and we have uh, our, our number of periods in is semi-annually we just have to take that eight percent and divide it by four okay so our uh, iy is going to be equal to four Okay, and then as we go forward, we're going to try to solve for the present value. That's what we're trying to get at, right? The price of the bond right now. So the the third component that we'll put in is the payment. Uh, this is going to be referred to as the coupon payment uh, that we'll put in here. And so the coupon payment, simply all you have to do is take 7% multiplied by 1,000. That's going to give you $70 per year. Okay, and since the bond pays semi-annually, we take that $70 uh, divided by 2. So our coupon uh, per semi-annual period is going to be 35 And the future value of our bond is going to be our par value here of $1,000. So we put $1,000 in uh, to that future value component. Uh, now we're going to compute present value here. So all we have to do is press compute uh, present value. And it gives us a present value uh, of this bond is equal to 930 32 dollars and uh, we'll round this up to five cents here okay so 932.05 is what you'll pay for uh, this bond and so this corresponds to uh, the coupon rate the yield also right so obviously uh, since our yield is higher than our coupon rate uh, this bond should be trading at a discount and it does trade at a discount okay trading at 932 dollars to its par value so those two things correspond so that's uh, you know the conventional version that most people uh, will uh, follow in terms of uh, pricing a bond um, there is a second method uh, that we can follow and a little bit more complicated but I'll walk you guys through it here and we're going to use the bond function down here uh, and through some of these inputs so to get to those bond functions all you have to do is press second uh, bond and so now you're going to see uh, it's called S dt okay and you're going to see the date uh, that corresponds there okay and we're going to put a couple different things in since we have a 10 year to maturity and so this sdt is this is the settlement date uh, for the bond so this is the the date in which um, we'll take ownership of that bond and so if we have a 10 year bond uh, and we're going to put in here uh, a period of 10 years you can see as we scroll do through here we have the settlement date then we have the coupon and this RDT date is the uh, expiration of the bond, okay? So the date that that bond becomes redeemed, okay? And so we're going to put in a couple different things here. So starting here, we're going to pick two dates, okay? And the date function to put the dates in are, are a little tricky, okay? So since we're working with a, a bond here that has 10 years to maturity, we're going to make up a couple dates here. And when you put these dates in, uh, you got to be careful about how you put these dates in. Um, we're going to put a date in as uh, January uh, 1st, uh, 2010. And so how you enter that date, uh, you enter uh, 1 in uh, as the month, okay? And then you press dot, okay? Followed by uh, the the uh, day okay so zero one and then followed by the last two digits of the year 
Okay, so the last two digits of the year here that we're using, we're using 2010 as the settlement date is 1-0. And, and if you press enter there, you'll see that that comes in as uh, month 1, January, day 1, 2010. So a little trick here. Remember here, again, how do we do this? So we press 1 for uh, the month. We have to put a dot there thereafter. 0, 1 for the day and the last two digits of the year. So the last two digits of the year that we're working with is 1, 0. Once we have that in, we hit enter. There's our date in terms of uh, the, the, the settlement date in which uh, we're buying this bond. So it's going to be the first date that we have. We press the down arrow after that. Uh, it asks for the coupon. Okay, so the coupon, uh, we just put the coupon in as uh, the annual coupon rate. Uh, that, that is shown 7%. We hit the down arrow. And then now we come to the redemption date uh, for this bond. Since we have a 10-year bond that we're using here, uh, we're just going to go 10 years from the time of the, uh, the settlement date that we put in. Okay, so we're going to follow uh, the, the same similar format that we had before. So one for uh, the month, 01 for the day, and then we're going to go forward uh, to 2020. Right, since we started at 2010, we put 20 in. Okay, we hit the enter arrow. You can see that the redemption date is 10 years uh, from the date that uh, the date that we had put in for the settlement date. Uh, so once we have that in, we press the down arrow. Okay, uh, this RV. Okay, uh, the redemption value, or and this is terms of a percent of what you're going to get back from uh, the par value. So a little bit tricky here. So this RV says that hey. Are you going to get 100% back of the par value? Or are you going to get 105% uh, back of the par value? Typically, this stays at 100%, but there are some bonds in which you may receive additional percentage points on top of what the par value is upon redemption. Okay, so 95% uh, of the time, this is going to stay in as 100%. I'm going to get 100% back of the par value. Hit the down arrow again. What well, we're going to see, we're going to come to ACT, okay? So this ACT uh, is going to be in reference to a couple different components here. You can have ACT, uh, which is going to give you uh, the yearly format of uh, uh, of uh, calculating uh, the bond's interest uh, and pricing. Okay, or you can work on a 360 uh, day year. Okay, we're going to stick to the 365 day year. Okay, so we'll just leave that as ACT. Down uh, the next arrow, this is going to correspond to the number of uh, times the coupon will be paid per year. So you see two per year. If you wanted to change that, you could just press second set. Uh, this will go to once per year. We'll leave it at two per year as in what we had in our example. Okay, and then it's going to ask you the yield. Okay, so the yield is simply what we have here. We're going to press 8 and we'll press enter here. Uh, hit the down arrow and then it's going to come to PRI. Our PRI is our principal. Okay, so this is good. this is going to be what we we calculate the bonds uh, price with here. Okay, and so it says zero because that's what we want. We can press compute here, and again it comes out to be ninety three point two zero four. Okay, and so this is a tad bit different than what we had before. Uh, before we had nine thirty two dot oh four eight. So when we calculate the price of the bond using the bond function, this gives us the price per $100, okay? So this is the price per $100. To get to our example with a bond with a $1,000 part value, we simply just move that decimal place uh, over 1 to 932.048, which is the same exact answer that we had uh, for the method that we used with the time value of money functions here. If you hit the down arrow a couple more times, uh, you can get to a, a duration uh, component here, uh, which is a, a benef real benefit of, uh, of using this bond function here. Uh, and this is going to actually give you the duration of, of the bond, uh, which is a lot easier than using a hand calculation to calculate that duration, but a little bit outside of uh, just calculating the price of the bond. Okay, so those are two different methods in which uh, you can get uh, to the bond's price. Okay, most people will stick with this first method that I showed you, but if you want to get a little bit deeper into the bond function here, uh, it gives you some additional components, especially in terms of finding duration. So uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below.